Good morning. I'm Robert Agnew filling in for Heather Birch who's in the Pacific Northwest for a funeral with Gary and was unable to be here today so um, I'm filling in. Um, we have uh, several announcements. The first one's going to be about Vacation Bible School. There's lots of announcements for you to look at in the bulletin, but I want to highlight this one. It's on a yellow sheet. Next Saturday is the rummage sale, and everything you need to know about it, you can find right here in your bulletin this morning. Let us bow our heads for the opening prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the bread of life. Let us feast on you and find nourishment for our souls. You are the light of the world. Let us follow you out of the darkness. You are the door. Let us enter the Father's presence in your name. You are the good shepherd. Let us rest in your provision. You are the resurrection and the life. Let us find true life and victory in you. You are the way, the truth, and the life. Let us love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We pray this in your name. Amen. Let us stand and uh, join the praise team in singing our opening song, starting with the power of your love. Please stand.
please be seated. And before the kids come up, we're going to have our confirmation service. So kids, stay where you are for now. And I'm going to ask Ken West to join me up here. And shortly, when Ken reads your name, I'd like the kids to come up and stand in the front. And then later in the confirmation service, after the Apostles' Creed, I will invite the parents of the kids to come and stand up here as well. But parents, you start out in the pews. Kids, come up first. The church is of God and will be preserved to the end of time for the conduct of worship and the due administration of God's word and sacraments, the maintenance of Christian fellowship and discipline, the edification of believers, and the conversion of the world. All of every age and station stand in need of the means of grace which it alone provides. Through confirmation and through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. All of these candidates have been in a class with Ken for the past nine months or so and have come of their own free will today to make their profession of faith. And as that says, remember their baptism, renew their own faith, and make a, a special commitment to Jesus and to the church today. And so I turn it over to Ken now to present the candidates. I present for confirmation today, Maggie Mae Brooks, Ryan Timothy Hester, Samantha Noel Small. Now, as you can all see, there is a screen right back there with the words. So if you need to look up, feel free to do so. I went over these vows with them and they share them today. Do you in the presence of God in this congregation renew the solemn vow and promise made at your baptism? If so, answer, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your savior, put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations and races? According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? And now to the congregation, do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? We do. You see, they are making vows with you. As you make vows before God, so too they make vows to support you in what you're doing and in God's work in your life. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Now, you'll say these as well as the congregation with you. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. At this time, I'd like to invite the parents of these confirmands to come and stand over here to my, to my right.
having professed faith in Christ, this is the vow that you make today. And it's the vow that all the adults make when they take the class and join the church as well. As members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If so, answer, I will. And now I'm gonna take turns with each of them and have them kneel here when I call your name. Ken and I are gonna lay hands on them and invite the parents of each confirmand to come and lay hands as well. So let's have the two of you step to the side right now. Oops, watch yourself, Ryan. And we'll uh, start with Sam. Please kneel. Would you join us? You want me to go with your full name or just uh, informal? <laughs> I'm just going to say Sammy. All right. <laughs> Sam, remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen. May the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, please arise and stand over there. All right, Maggie. Maggie, remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen. May the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. You can go over there too, or stay over there. Doesn't matter. All right. Ryan, remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen. May the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, please arise. And now, members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. And now may the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. And could we have you three with Ken and I first to uh, do a picture? Dick, you're ready. He's always ready for me. I'm so glad that you're healthy enough to be here today. Uh, yeah, you go on that side and put them right here. All right. Everybody smile. Make it look like you're happy. <laughs> All right, very good, thank you, Dick. I do that because there was one new members class that we had a couple years ago where I had pictures taken just during the service. And when I looked at them later, nobody was smiling. They're all just standing there looking. And so, please smile, make it look like you're happy, very good. Um, thank you, would you welcome them as they take, oh no, Ken, you've got something for each of them. Uh, let's let Ken distribute these first and then uh, we will applaud as they take their seats. I could help you, you know. I guess uh, that would be a nice thing to do. All right, let's appreciate them as they take their seats. Thank you. Very good. And now, would the children please come forward for our children's message? Good morning, boys and girls. How are we all today? Good. So glad to see you all here. 
I have something special that I'd like to show you. This is a really neat trick, but I'm not really that great at it. So I know it starts out with a bandana like this. And you're supposed to kind of roll the bandana. So let me do it this way. It looks like there's a crease there. And you fold it up like so. Now the way this illusion is supposed to work is I get a pair of scissors and I'm supposed to cut this in half, right? And let me turn and go through the instructions in my head here as I do this. Cut this in half. All right, and then let's see. Uh, oh wait, I think I might have missed a step. I was supposed to do something sneaky before I cut it. And I didn't do the sneaky part yet. Um, I'll tell you what, do you guys mind? Let me see. Do you mind if I start over at the beginning again? Let me start over at the beginning with the bandana as it was. Get the scissors and then, no, I'm just kidding. Actually, you know what? Let's just forget that trick and let's instead talk about this idea of starting over again. Have you guys ever made a mistake and you wish that you could start over again? Go back to the beginning, like you're coloring a picture and all of a sudden you color outside the lines. Like, oh, what am I gonna do? And then you get a new piece of paper and you start over again. And you just throw away the old one because you don't need it anymore. You start with a new sheet of paper. You start over. You know, that's what happens with God when we accept Jesus into our hearts. And when we make a mistake, we pray and we ask Jesus to forgive us. And it's like, he says, okay, start over again. And he gives us a fresh start. He gives us a second chance. He gives us a new sheet, a new day to try to do better. And so whenever you find yourself in a time where you make a mistake, I want you to know that that's normal. We all make mistakes, but thankfully with the grace of God and with the help of Jesus, we can start over again. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you that you teach us all to start over again and that you give us your grace that helps us when we make a mistake to do it better the next time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, boys and girls, we've got some special treats over here. Let's see what we have today. Oh, let's do Rice Krispie treats. And we've got today a Sunday school class for our summer Sunday school, which is for any kids three years old up through first grade. So if you're three years old up through first grade, uh, you can go down if it's okay with your parents. You can go down, will four-year-olds count too? That's all right. You can go downstairs for our Sunday school class and come up again at the end. Yeah. Is she okay with one of these? Yeah, or a lollipop? Yeah, okay, all right, very good. Got one? Good. All right. All right. At this time now, we have a recognition of our graduates. Special day in the life of the church. We have Confirmation Sunday today where we recognize our confirmands and I think it's, uh, it's neat to see the different age groups. The confirmands that you saw stand up here at one time we're running up here like the little ones to do the children's message. Those little ones are running up to do the children's message. A few years from now, we hope they'll be standing up here to take their confirmation. And then a few years beyond that, we hope that they'll be standing up here to graduate. Parents, don't blink. It happens quickly. So enjoy every moment of it. Uh, but right now we get to the point where we have our graduates recognized. And we have a few different high school graduates today as well as some college graduates. And so I'm gonna ask the high school graduates just to sit and stay where you are and watch this. And we're all gonna cross our fingers and hope that this plays the way that we planned. Uh, Carol, whenever you're ready, let's watch the video and hope the music comes too.
And at this time, I would like to invite Ken to come up again. And graduates, as we call your name, if you would come up to the front and receive a gift that we have for each of you. Are they named, no. labeled? Oh, okay. All right. So, Colby Hughes. And Jude Burke, Jack Brooks, and Ben Small, and I don't, oh yeah, Jaden's here, Jaden Shustak. I think that's all of them, right? All right, very good. Um, Let's get one more picture, Dick, if you would, for our graduates up here, smile. Excellent. All right, and would you give them a round of applause as they take their seats to appreciate these graduates. So before, you, before you go down, let me, let me say a prayer with you. Almighty God, we give you thanks for these graduates. We pray that as they take a new step in their journey of life, that you would walk with them every step of that journey. Let them know the love of God in very powerful ways. Let them know the peace of Christ and let them know the guidance of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, please take your seats. You know, you saw the one picture with Jaden of the cross and the outdoor worship service that he helped to build as part of his Eagle Scout project. Uh, we were able to use that this week in a memorial service, a very small, intimate memorial service outdoors. And it, it was just wonderful to be able to go outside and utilize that space. And we do plan to do that again uh, with other outdoor services probably in the evening here this summer and certainly into this fall. So be on the lookout for an announcement about that. All right, at this time we come to another special time in our service where we are privileged to award a scholarship. This is the Dorothy and James Humphreys Memorial Scholarship, which was started in 2012. It is awarded annually to a graduating senior who is a member of Trinity United Methodist Church and who is going on to post high school education. The recipients or recipients are chosen based on several criteria, including academics, extracurricular activities, community service, church involvement, and family need. This year, the Humphrey Scholarship Committee is pleased to award the full scholarship to Colby Hughes. Colby, would you come up and receive? And as the video said, Colby will be going on to Pitt University to study pre-med. Congratulations, Colby. Smile for Dick there. <laughs> All right. Very good. There you are, my friend. Thank you. And thank you to the Humphreys family for making the scholarship possible. All right. For a time of joys and concerns, does anybody have a joy or a concern that you'd like to share? Dennis. All right, uh, Julie and Dennis are going to be grandparents, uh, first grandson, and that will be in November. Macy and Tatum are expecting, so congratulations to the Mardik family and the Ross family, right? Okay, <laughs> let me make sure I get that name right. What, oh, Marks, that's right. His name is Tatum Marks, but he goes by John Ross Tatum Marks, and that's where the Ross came from, because I knew him as Tatum for the entire time I knew him. And then at the wedding, he's like, oh, call me John Ross. I'm like, wait a second, you're Tatum. Anyway, sorry for the confusion. Congratulations to you. Are there other announcements or, or uh, prayers? Yeah. Thank everybody for their prayers. Dick is with us today. As you know, Dick had surgery uh, a couple of weeks back and uh, still recovering, so glad to see you here, Dick. Others? Jamie. Welcome, Susie. Glad that you're here with us. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Our daughter Gabby was due on Wednesday, and the baby is not ready to come yet. So uh, Gabby's ready, but the baby apparently is not. So we pray that uh, everything will go well for her. Yes, Denise.
Yes, we're so pleased. Uh, we'll introduce her next week to you. Her name is Patty. She works at our weekday school downstairs and uh, started today in our preschool or in our uh, nursery. So we're thrilled and looking forward to having you guys get to meet Patty. Others? Linda? Um, my sister-in-law, her name is Lina, has cancer. Mm. Prayers for Linda's sister-in-law, Lina, um, has cancer and is going through chemo. Any others? Dan. I uh, am grateful that Phil Barney's here with us today. Yeah. Sure yeah, you hear that saxophone? That's uh, Milt, and uh, we're so glad to have Milt here with us today, and uh, Calvin on the guitar as well. So, any others? Yeah, Dave. Uh, first of all, I received a recent cancer diagnosis. Mm, okay. Dave's aunt just recently received a cancer diagnosis. We want to pray for her. Others, yes, Denise, or I'm sorry, Carol. I'm thankful for the prayers. Yeah, glad to see Carol with us today. Uh, she is here recovering from back surgery, and uh, glad that you're here. Others. All right, we welcome the visitors that are here. I know some of you are here for graduation or confirmation or family, and some of you might be here uh, for the first time, just happen to come in today. We're glad that you're all here and hope that you'll find this a welcoming place. Let's go to God in prayer. Is there a praise in your heart today? Is there a joy in your life? A prayer that God has answered? something that you're wanting to lift up a praise for, whatever it is, let's take a moment of silence and lift up our praises before the Lord. Is there a need in your life? Is there something that you're struggling with today? You're here, you've made it to church, but your mind isn't really on God. Your mind is on whatever it is that's gnawing at you right now. That feeling in the gut, that heaviness to your heart, that burden that you're bearing. Whatever you're struggling with, we believe that God hears us when we pray. And I invite you in this moment of silence to lift up your prayers before the Lord. And let's have a moment of silence now to be still and to listen for God's voice. Almighty God, we come before you today, lifting up to you these praises and lifting up to you these prayers. We rejoice for the celebrations that we have today, celebrations of confirmants, professing their faith and dedicating their, this, this portion of their pathway at this stage of their life to you. Lord, we praise you for the graduates, each of them excited about the possibilities of the future. Uh, we hope 
uh, cherishing the past, the people, the places, the experiences that have brought them to where they are now. And as they stand on the cusp of a new journey in life, a new chapter, a new page to turn, we pray that you would guide their steps. We pray that you would fill them with hope and that you would help each and every one of them to discover the path that you have set before them. Lord, we pray also for those that are here today who are in a time of transition, either stepping off into something new or saying goodbye to something that is changing. Lord, we pray for your blessings upon us. We pray that you would help each and every one of us to deal with the changes in life, to appreciate your presence in wherever we are on our journey. Help us to know that you walk with us. Help us to walk with you. For the prayers that have been raised today for healing, for the prayers that have been raised today in uh, celebration, for the prayers that have been raised silently, we ask that you would respond and that you would use us in that response. All of these things we pray in the name of Jesus, as you taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture lesson today is Jeremiah 29, verses 4 through 11. But I'm not going to preach on it today. Uh, I see the time. I know you probably all see the time and are thinking, we got communion yet too, Pastor. And, uh, well, you know, there's no game today, but we got places to be. Um, I recognize that we are a little bit uh, cramped today in our service. And I want to make sure that we have time for those special events that we've already had as well as to give time to communion. So I'm going to give you a shortened version today. And then next week, I'm going to preach this full sermon on Jeremiah 29. And I, I hope that you'll come back next week because it's a fascinating study on what Jeremiah had to say. And I believe that it's applicable not only to graduates, to confirmands, uh, but to all of us. Uh, let me read it for you, and then I, I promise you I'll just hinge on Jeremiah 29, 11. We'll talk about the rest of it next week. Hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. So note first here who this is to. This is not to the Jewish people who were living in Jerusalem thriving under King David, having a great time with their life in their homes as they had always been. These are exiles. These are people who had been uprooted from where they were comfortable, uprooted from where they were familiar, had seen their city, their beloved city of Jerusalem, sacked by the Babylonian army, had watched their family members and friends and many of their people be killed and slaughtered, had watched their temple burn to the ground, by the Babylonian armies and who were carried off in chains to exile in a city far away to Babylon. That's the context of Jeremiah 29, 11. And here's what he continues to say. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there, do not decrease. Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Yes, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says. Do not let the prophets and diviners among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams you encourage them to have. They are prophesying lies to you in my name. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my gracious promise to bring you back to this place. And here's the verse. 
graduates, you might have seen this on some of the cards you've got or books. It's a very common verse that is thrown around at times of graduation. The words are beautiful, but the context is interesting. Having just read it to you, I hope you know the context of the exile. But here's the verse. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. There are a lot of lessons that we can learn from this text. And I, again, I hope to share some of them with you next week. But what I want to pull from just this verse today are, are just a couple of things. What this verse says to me, just go back to 2911 if you would, Carol. Let's just keep it there. We won't worry about all those slides. For I know the plans I have for you. When you're there and you're just wondering, what's next for me? What's next? College? Military, gap year, work, something else? Where do I live? What do I do? How do I make money? What's my purpose in life? What's my plan for life? What pathway will I begin to walk now? And you know, that's something that certainly when you're 17, 18, 19 years old as a student graduating from high school, there are some big decisions that you've got to make. Verses like this really help to guide us and give us hope and say, you know what, I don't know what my plan is, but maybe God does. Maybe if I do my best to step forward, God's going to lead me in that direction. And then three, four years later, we graduate from college, or we find ourselves in a new job, or we find ourselves in the military, or wherever it is that we found ourselves in life. And, you know, it's not like the decisions end there. It's not like once we declare a college, declare a major, declare a job or a career, that all of a sudden we're set for life and every step is clear from that day forward. We continue to search for our path and for God's plan. We continue to look for it and to wonder where it's going to lead us. What do I do now? Where do I go? And you know what? I don't have the answer for you, but what I will say is that I do believe this verse to be true. And the context of it, as I've said, we're, we're not someone graduating from high school and getting ready to step off into a wonderful world. This was people who had just lost everything. And they were transitioning into something that was very unfamiliar, that they didn't understand, that they didn't know what was going to happen. And ultimately, God says these words to them. Go and seek the peace and prosperity of wherever I put you. I have carried you into exile. Go and marry and have sons and daughters and uh, build houses, plant gardens, and make the most of the time that you have there. Basically, I think what God is saying to them is bloom where you're planted. And I believe that what God would say to you as well is bloom where you're planted, wherever it is that you find yourself. Believe that God has a plan for you there. Believe that God has a place for you there, but know that you're not always gonna have it figured out. You're not always gonna get it right, and most of our situations are temporary. They weren't gonna be here in Babylon forever. You're not gonna be where you are forever. You're gonna step out in faith. You're gonna find a new path. You're gonna start a new adventure. But what I hope you'll hold on to is this idea, this belief, this faith, that wherever you go in life, God is with you. I'm going to make this quick, but you know, every week I stand up here and I have a prayer time with you. The pastoral prayer is not just me praying. It's us praying together. And so I ask, are there joys, are there concerns that you would share? And you share them as you did today. And then we take a moment, three moments of silence. One, to reflect on what we have to praise God about. One, on what we want to pray to God for. And then that moment of silence where we just stop and listen. And that comes from Psalm 42, which says, Be still and know that I am God. And so I invite you into what I consider to be a sacred space. To be still in the presence of the Lord. And I don't know about you, but in that space where I say, now let us have a moment of silence and listen for what God might say to us. I've been doing that for about 20 plus years. Very seldom do I hear God say anything to me. 
every week, 20 plus years. Let's have a moment of silence and listen for what God might say to us. Very seldom do I ever hear God say anything to me. But a few weeks ago, I felt like I did. I felt something. You could go back and watch on the video from a few weeks ago and you'll see me start to write something during the middle of that prayer, during the middle of that silence. And I wrote on my bullet and these words that somehow came to me. It wasn't an audible voice. I don't know if it was God, to be honest. I'd like to believe it was. But as you know, we're in a time in the life of the church right now where there's a lot of talk about division. We're in a time in our country right now where there's a lot of divisiveness and there's a lot of anger, uh, sides, polarization, all of those things. And those weigh on me as a pastor. Those weigh on me as a leader as I try to recognize that even in this church, we have people who are polarized on your beliefs about politics. We have people that are polarized on your beliefs about the Bible, about God, about theology, and current issues. And I want to create a space for all of us. But sometimes that gets overwhelming. And every now and then, I have to be honest with you, I think, man, I don't know if I want to keep doing this. It's hard to be in a position of leadership, especially when you, as, as I do, you try to kind of stay in the middle and hold both sides together. That isn't always easy. And every now and then I get this thought, you know, I could go work at Walmart again or something, you know. Uh, McDonald's is hiring, I see that. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know. But you get these thoughts every now and then. And I wrestle with that every now and then. Um, and so I was thinking about various pressures and different things. I really felt a few weeks ago, these words come to me from God, and I'll share them with you, and then we'll end and move into communion. And the words were, this is where I have you now. Live into it. And I think that's what Jeremiah was saying to the exiles. I think maybe that's what Jeremiah and God's word would say to you as you think about where you are in life, about what's brought you to this place in life, about the doors that are before you, and you don't know which path to take, you don't know where to go. But hear the voice of God say, this is where I have you now. Live into it. Live in this moment. Enjoy the moment that you're in. Build houses, plant gardens. Live your life here, because tomorrow isn't promised. But what I can promise you is that God will be with you today. And that wherever it is that God has you in life, live into that. Seek God's path. Seek God's plan. Seek God's presence. And ultimately live into where God has you right now. Knowing that might not be where you are forever. If you're in a bad place, you know, I'm not encouraging you to stay there. Try to find your way out. But live into it. Live into it with God's presence to guide you. And see where God wants to lead you. And then take the steps to follow God there. This is where I have you now. Live into it. Let's pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks that you guide and lead each and every one of us. And Lord, when we face these transitions, when we face these challenges, and we're not quite sure where to go or which way to go, and we question, are you even here? Lord, help us to recognize your presence in the everyday. Help us to recognize your presence in the good, in the bad, in the trials, in the triumphs. Help us to recognize you and to hear your words. This is where I have you now. Live into it. Lord, help us to live into the life that you have given us as we follow Jesus through it. In his name we pray. Amen. And right now I'm going to give you a few moments of silence to reflect on those words, to reflect on Jeremiah or whatever it is God's laying on your heart today. Uh, I think that God speaks a lot more than I do. And so we're going to have some special music now and just let you have a few moments of quiet reflection.
Have you played before, Milt? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> that was supposed to be a joke, folks. He's outstanding, isn't he? Yeah. All right. Milt used to play for the military band uh, under Reagan. Are you Am I on now? All right. Milt, did you used to play for the military band under Reagan? Twice. Twice. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. And uh, Milt was a teacher for all three of our boys, Johnny, Jason, and Jeremy. And uh, we are so thrilled to have you here today. For a time of Holy Communion in the United Methodist Church, we celebrate an open table, which means that if you're a member of this church or not, or if you're not a member of any church, um, we invite you to come and celebrate Holy Communion with us today. If you're seek seeking a closer relationship with God through Jesus, then this table is open to you and we invite you to come. And we are reminded that in Holy Communion we are to examine ourselves before we eat the bread and drink the cup. And for me that means just a time of silent confession, silent reflection on God in our lives and uh, try to get your heart right with God before we start. So let's have a moment of silence now. Confess your sins and get your hearts right with the Lord. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. On the night that he gave himself up for us, our Lord took bread, gave thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. And then after supper, he took the cup, gave it to his disciples, and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this to remember me. Let us pray. Almighty God, we remember you today, and we invite your presence into this time with us, into our hearts, into our minds, into our lives. Lord, as we take these elements of bread and juice, we ask that you would make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by your blood. Together make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in unity to all the world as we come together to share in Holy Communion today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'd like to invite the ushers to come forward at this time. We're going to have two sets here, and so would ask you to, as you come for Holy Communion, come both sides. I'll also have a gluten-free wafer available to those that need gluten-free. And we have the disposable cups as well for those of you that uh, would, would like to take just an individual disposable cup. Those wafers are also gluten-free. And as we have been doing, the ushers will uh, break off a, a small piece of bread and give it to you. And I will be here with the gluten-free and the uh, disposable. Please come as you feel led to come. The table is ready, and we invite you to share in the Lord's table.
The Bible says as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Come Lord Jesus, amen. And I've decided to uh, forego the ministry moment this week and just say that this confirmation and graduation service and the Humphrey Scholarship was uh, mission and ministry enough for today. So we certainly celebrate with all of these people. If you'd like to leave an offering, there's a plate at the back of the church where you're welcome to do so. And uh, know that whatever you give, it, it goes to, to fund various ministries so that we can continue to reach children of all ages, adults of all ages, and uh, tell people about Jesus. Let's pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the offerings that we are able to give and for the ministry that we are able to do here at Trinity. We pray that you would bless all of us as we give, bless those who receive, and bless us all as we do your work. In Jesus' name, amen. And at this time, I'd like to invite the... As you go, and as you go, there is a cake out there. So if you'd like to come out and have a piece of cake and appreciate and uh, celebrate with these graduates and these confirmants, we welcome you to do that. And now may the love of Christ, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the peace of God be with you all. Amen. Amen.